So what's up guys, this video is about what's better, Cycles or Octane, so I had to put on my helmet because I know there's going to be some Octane haters out there. Uh, but if you ask me, so I haven't used Octane that long, so I think seven days now I started using Octane, but like every day, like I liked it so much, I use it every day. And if you ask me, Octane is better than Cycles for sure. The standard shader is just better, the principal shader just isn't good, like it never was good since they made it, like it's kind of cool, but it's kind of just not really good um, and also cycles is kind of cool but just isn't really good stuff like filmic and all this stuff like it just all is almost good uh, the render passes like cryptomat and stuff all kind of good but also here cycles is struggling since i'm using cycles for whenever it came out almost 10 years ago cycles always had these issues and especially when i was working with people like being the only blender guy they were using like vred and vray and fstorm and corona and uh, basically everything except cycles uh, i always struggled to get cycles into any pipelines because it was lacking basic features especially on like render layers and stuff like that so I always had problems with cycles till this day. Uh, so I thought uh, I'll, I gave a lot of renderers a try, but I thought maybe I'll give Octane a try because Octane is so well implemented into Blender. I was very impressed on how well it's stuck into Blender. Um, so yeah, my opinion is that Octane is for sure better, uh, but you can make your own opinion. I highly recommend uh, trying it yourself. It's completely free. And what I'm gonna do in this video is not just doing a back and forth. I'm basically just gonna show you the basics of Octane and Blender and how to use it. So then you can just start using it and yeah, making your own opinion on what works better in your workflows and what you want to use. So one thing is of course cycles, you're always gonna be up to date and stuff like that. Octane, you're always gonna be behind. So there are some downsides sides to not working in the default blender but there's also some pretty big upsides especially working professionally and with teams um, it's just a bit more industry uh, standard friendly than cycles sadly so let's jump right into blender so before we open blender i actually did a one-to-one -one comparison of course it's a different shader and everything's a bit different so it's not one-to-one -one, but i tried to match it as good as possible and i used the same rgb values and stuff like that and I did a poll on Instagram. I think around 55% chose Octane with not knowing it was Octane and 45% chose Cycles, um, which I thought was interesting. So pretty similar results, but more people chose Octane and I personally would also choose Octane. On Cycles, I already see this disgusting filmic and this yellow is a bit strange, the window, everything's just a bit off. I don't know what it is. Octane everything is a bit less off and a bit more realistic and just a bit more under control i don't know but that's just my personal opinion i think octane looks quite a bit better than cycles and i could do whatever i want with cycles i will not achieve this octane look i also played around with aces it's just impossible it just always has this cycles look that i personally just don't like I did another rendering, uh, here's just the generic moval car, and I don't have a comparison, but like just my eye can tell you, I don't think I would have achieved this in Cycles, because Cycles just has this look, especially white materials in Cycles are pretty hard to achieve. Um, so yeah, just so you kind of see what I've seen, what I've done for renders. Oh, another render maybe that's interesting to you, I just rendered a Apple Watch as well, looks like this. Um, I don't know. If this would have been possible in cycles maybe i don't know but like i've used cycles a long time and my stomach says this is not possible in cycles <laughs> so okay then maybe let's just open blender so what you need i won't explain how to install octane there's enough tutorials out there and you probably don't even need a tutorial it's pretty straightforward but what you'll need is the octane server so that's the first downside you need like a probably an internet connection to be honest i haven't tested it if it works without internet but you have to run this server then you also have to run a custom octane blender build you can download so you will always be behind on blender versions you won't be up to date also not ideal but still um everything works great so i work in quite old blender versions anyways uh, because i work in like stable versions and you see this is blender 2.92 so it's pretty up to date um if you open the scene uh, it looks just like this it actually boots cycles so you have to 
go to Octane. So now we have Octane. If I go to render mode, you also already see there's no material preview, there's no EV, there's nothing. It's a bit different, but basically pretty similar. So um, if I delete the cube and I'll just add a monkey head, you see everything's pretty much kind of like, you know, it, like it's still Blender, you know, it's not like a new software, you can shade smooth, all pretty much same stuff. If I go to the camera and render, you'll notice I can't render if I'm rendering in the viewport. Also one little difference that sometimes is a bit annoying, but theoretically makes sense. Now you also see the color is way off. So the first thing you have to do is go to the camera settings and go to basically post filters. It's called Octane Camera Imager and the gamma has to be 2.2. I don't know why this is not default. It could easily be default because who wants a wrong gamma right at the start? So this is the first thing you always have to change. Um, what can I show you next? I guess we can look at the material. So the principal shader that is called the universal shader here. So if we go to the monkey head, actually also lift the camera a bit, <clears throat> go to the monkey head, new material, you see it created a shader and it's called the universal material. This is pretty much the principal shader, but I think quite a bit better. So one little cool thing it has is a shadow catcher. And I don't know if you know that, but for me, the cycles shadow catcher is completely useless. I've never used it in my life. I tried it and it's just so bad. It's unusable. Um, this one is actually usable. So also a big plus point. I don't know what Blender is doing with their uh, shadow catcher, but also Blender, like there's so many features they didn't change since I'm using Blender for so many years. Um, so no wonder they're not good. So I think it will just take more time, but yeah, render engines like Octane are just like many steps ahead, uh, unfortunately. Like, you can't really, yeah, they're just far ahead. <laughs> so, uh, but otherwise, let's uh, look at the shader a bit more. I won't go through all settings, but basic stuff like metallic, roughness, you can change color, stuff like this. Uh, you can add a clear coat, just make it white. There you have a clear coat. And you can turn down specular, turn down specular up. Like on metallic, you won't see it. But uh, here on the diffuse, no specular, one specular. Basic stuff, pretty much just like the principal shader, except this one just looks better. Like I can't really explain what it is, but somehow this one is just more correct in my eyes. So how do you make glass? A bit weird and abstract. So you turn down albedo and turn up transmission. A bit weird maybe to understand in the beginning, but works fine and works well. And I don't know what it is, but like even this glass already looks pretty good. <laughs> uh, so let's make it non-glass again. Okay, what else do you want to see? Ah, here's one interesting thing. You see the white is completely busting out. So you can go to the camera and also to the imager that we uh, enabled, wherever it is, here it is. There's something called highlight compression. Look at this. Like this is really cool, especially for white cars or white stuff in general. Um, this is kind of like filmic, except it works. Uh, and also what's kind of cool, but you maybe don't need, but vignetting, you're like, oh, okay, vignette, I can do it in any software. Yes, but look at this, it pulls down exposure. So it's like a real vignetting. Um, so Blender isn't really a real one. I guess you could fake a real one, but this one just works. Everything is just more realistic off the bat here. So that's something I really like. Also, uh, we can jump right into that. Then uh, there is post effects in the camera. There's no real compositor. It's like all kind of in the camera, which I also kind of like. So if we make this a black smooth material where we can see the sun, maybe we rotate this. So we see some somewhere the sun, I guess here's the sun. Then we can go back to the camera, the post effects. And we're going to boost the glare real quick. And it's going to pop like this to control the cut off, which is basically the threshold. Oh, we have to be in the camera. Wait, am I in the camera? Ah, here it is. Uh, so we have to be in the camera and then we can change the cut off and also the bloom. Just like, it's still a bit strange like this and do power of 10, 10, kind of like this. And these glares, you would never achieve in Blender. Like these glares are way more realistic than the Blender ones and they work in the viewport, which I think is uh, pretty interesting. And uh, what else is interesting? Um, what's unfortunate, uh, 
this is like a very high F stop, like F22 or 32. Uh, that's how you get these stars in real life. So there's no correlation between glare and F stop. That would be pretty cool. But there's still glare blur, which is kind of the equivalent. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that word um, to a low F stop. So this would be, I don't know, like guessing maybe a six or a five F stop. So that's pretty cool. You can just change the blur also. Little thing, but this works really well, especially on cars. This looks very, very realistic. Um, okay, I think that's enough for post effects. Okay, uh, if we render something, uh, I'm gonna go to very low samples like this and render it. And as you can expect, it's a pretty, or actually not that noisy. Let's go even more noisy. It's a pretty noisy image. Um, so now you probably wanna know how to denoise. So in the camera, you're gonna enable denoising but also in the render layers you're gonna go to passes denoiser and enable beauty so it's a it's a pass on its own kind of also like in cycles and also you can already kind of glance around here there's way more passes way more industry friendly passes and a lot of things blender should be having for 10 years by now and still doesn't have they're all right here so also very very nice most people won't appreciate this but some people that work a lot like with layers uh, they will appreciate this layer system a lot so you see it's not denoised so we go to the denoise pass and it's still not denoised because i think one sample maybe is just not enough so let's maybe add five samples render again and go to the denoiser and there you have it it's denoised so that's how you use the denoiser. It was a bit confusing to me in the beginning. Okay, let's go to the world settings. <clears throat> um, this well, like background node is from Cycles. You can just delete this. This is their default sky. Um, you don't really need it, but it's a cool gimmick. You can like change time. You can um, change location and stuff like that. Day, month, um, all this kind of stuff. And it just looks pretty cool. I don't know if you'll ever need it, but I guess for ArcVis and stuff, maybe you can use it. I don't know, but it looks pretty good for sure. I did, like rendered a car also like the Supron Desert was only default sky. Um, I don't know if I already showed that. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> so that was the default sky. So it works pretty well. Um, now you probably want to know how to hook up a HDR. So what you'll need is a texture environment node so this and we're going to hook it up to the octane environment not surface so now it's just white now we're going to need a image texture we're going to hook that up and we're going to open up a hdr just a small one so it goes quicker and you see it's way off because also here for some reason i don't know why the gamma should be one but it's 2.2 so everything's a bit mixed up here so just reset that and there you have it a hdr as you know it um now you probably want to know how to rotate this bad boy you're going to use a transform node uh, not mapping and hook it up to transform and use the translation not the rotation and that's how you rotate the HDR. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Okay, what else do you want to know? You maybe want to know how to set up a physical based shader. Let's go back to object. Let's go back to this. And we're going to hook up a image. Oh, one thing really important world 32 uh, bit, not 16 bit. I'm not sure if you'll see a big difference, but don't forget that. Okay, back to object. Um, how to make like a texture. You're going to use an image texture pretty like you probably already know that um we're gonna hook up i don't know what do i have uh oh i actually have some normal maps here okay this is a texture no this is a roughness here's the albedo so here's some rock and we're gonna use a roughness map as well go to downloads i already forgot what i just used uh was it this i think so so roughness and also put that on the floor as well and the last one is the normal map so get up to normal map and go to downloads and get the normal map just like this and as far as i know i want to tell you i don't want to say anything wrong but as far as i know you, there's no no color detail and stuff like that you just plug it up directly it looks correct to me um, so I think that's how it's done, but don't take my word for it. I might be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure this is correct. Probably it's even correcter with gamma one or maybe not. I'm still a bit confused about these gammas, 
Maybe on these it should be one. I'm not 100% sure, but you see it looks pretty good and can definitely be used um, like this. And I guess I haven't played around with this a lot, but if you hook up a full transform to transform, just like this, you can probably change the scale, no? Uh, this is translation, this is like position, of course, uh, scale is what we want to do, yeah. So this is how you can change the scale as well on the texture. So I think that's it. Mm, is there something else you want to know? I can't really hear your, vo uh, hear your voice in case you're saying yes, I want to know this and that. Uh, I guess maybe comment below. Maybe I can make a second part because actually, to be honest, I think I'll be working quite a bit more with Octane in the future. And this might be the death of Cycles for me. Cycles does render faster, but like Octane renders fast enough for me. And just the Cycles look, I can't take it anymore. So yeah, that's it. So that's it for today. Uh, like I said, give Octane a try, just test it out, um, play around with it and see if you have fun with it. If not, then not, like who cares? But yeah, I just thought I'll make a video about it. So have fun and goodbye.